Hey guys, thanks for checking out the video today. We're just kind of cruising around. We're gonna go visit a car show that's happening up in Wells, Maine. Um, we're gonna go take some pictures of some cars we see on the way. And just to start it off, I'll start with that food truck right there. We made it over to the little car show. There's a couple cars parked over here and then there's a couple more cars parked just on the other side of those. So over here, we got an Impala for sale. And I guess at one point this car was for sale at Fair Jackson. I really love the taillights on this car. So from far away, I thought this was an FBRX7 and we finally get up close to it. And it's something called a Buick Rietta. Hey, at least I know what these look like now. It's a Mercury Grand Marquis. But one of my favorite parts about this, the headlights flip out. Just look at the detail that goes into these things. The hood ornament. This is a really big car, but the trim is beautiful. Stop to grab a couple pictures, but then we're gonna go stop by Motorland and take some pictures of the R32 and the Supra and a couple other cars over there. So we just showed up to Motorland. We're gonna take a video of some of the cars that are here. Right here we have a four-door Le Mans, and then we have a four-door Chrysler New Yorker. Got this old vintage Dodge camper sitting on this side. This is the best I can get for a view of the Supra. But they also have this sitting over here for sale as well. A few really nice Mercedes SLs. So I came out the next morning. I just wanted to grab some more clear clips and share some cool facts about some of the Japanese cars I have for sale here. So something kind of cool about this little Honda Beat. It's a little K car. It's powered by a three cylinder engine that makes 63 horsepower. And actually funny enough, this car is a mid engine car. So right here we have a 1991 Nissan Figaro. They don't really use the brand name Nissan so much on this car. They really, they really want it to be known it's a Figaro. You can see Nissan real, real small in that emblem. But everywhere else, like places on the hubcaps, it says Figaro. That's really uh, the big brand name here. And lastly, right here, it says Figaro. And the only other place it says Nissan is this tiny little, like, one-inch Nissan emblem at the back. It's in the same series, called the Pike series, as the Nissan Pow. Which, funny enough, both these Nissans are made in 1991. Same as my truck. You can see right on the front of this little Nissan PAL. You can only see PAL, but when you get really, really close, you can see it says Nissan, produced by the Pike factory. This is a pretty cool little car, though. It's got a lot of room for it being such a small car. So at the time of production, only 2,000 of these cars were supposed to be made. Then, they were in such high demand, 20,000 models were made. And just to be able to buy one, you had to buy a ticket to enter a raffle just to be able to purchase one. So both of these cars, the Nissan Pow and the Nissan Figaro, are both supposed to be classic but yet modern cars. This car is a drop top and back here is not the trunk. This is for the convertible to fold down. Actually down here is your trunk. I can't open up anything on the car. But what happens is when you fold this up, you have a really long pocket of space. So these cars were made to look a lot like a 1950s micro car. You can kind of see the radio down there is supposed to be retrofitted. The whole dash is supposed to look really 50s. This car also in particular is a one liter turbo three speed automatic. So what's really cool about these retro styled cars is they only came in four colors. You had Lapras gray for winter and emerald green for spring, pale aqua for summer and tapas mist for fall. So this is a pretty special Subaru Impreza because it's a Tommy Cara Tuning Company edition. So another really cool right-hand drive Japanese car they have here is the Subaru SVX. So this car is all-wheel drive and they made about 10,000 models per year. But unfortunately the downfall of the car was at the time of production it was a little costly and made about 230 horsepower. But one of the problems was the transmission couldn't really hold up to the power. It only ever came as a four-speed automatic. The car was made to compete against cars like the Toyota Supra and the Mazda RX-7 at the time. This car is very sleek and has a lot of style. One of the other really unique traits about this car is the pillarless glass roof. But nonetheless, it's still a really cool car to come by. And lastly, right here we have the 1992 Nissan R32 GTR Skyline. 
So what's really cool about this car is it came with an inline six. It's called the RB26 DETT. It's a twin turboed all wheel drive quadra steer car. I can't touch the car to show you guys, but I did want to share that down here, another cool fact about this car is back in the day, street racing was kind of a big thing. So what Nissan did is you have this uh, rear plate mount and you can flip it up to kind of hide your plate from getting caught by cameras and things like that when you were out racing. So the GTR also has another pretty known nickname. It was given to the car by Australians insulting Nissan for beating them in races. That nickname was the Godzilla. I am a pretty big Nissan kid though, so I am pretty excited to see this car here. All these Japanese cars I did take a video of today here are all straight from Japan. I'm not sponsored by any means, but I figured since I used the cars on their lot for this video, I would share. All these cars are for sale at Motorland in Arundel, Maine on Route 1. You can also stop by to see their main classic car museum. I have been in there once and it's pretty cool. They got some really nice cars in there. So it's definitely worth a check out if you're ever in Southern Maine. But that about does it for the cars out here in this lot. We'll come take a, another check by in a few months and see what they have uh, sitting on the lot that we haven't seen before. So here's something I wanted to show you guys really quick as well. I carpeted some of the bed, but I also put some of the underglow inside the bed as well. And I think it looks pretty good when the bed cover's open. Well guys, I'm gonna end the video off here. If you wanna see some more truck content in the future, be sure to like and subscribe. You can also follow me on Instagram at Japanese Mini Truck. Thank you so much for watching.